Gas metal arc welding electrode classification, also MIG, metal inert gas, or MAG, metal active gas. We're going to go ahead and cover the electrode classification uh, for the wire that you will be burning. And we're going to start with the ER70S X. So E is for electrode. So you have an electrode. An electrode basically is a means of electricity being able to flow through the wire. Okay. Uh, the second one here is rod. So that's R. Um, however, R doesn't necessarily apply to gas metal arc welding. Uh, it's the same exact wire used in gas metal arc welding and gas tungsten arc welding TIG. So really it's the filler rod, R-O-D, rod for TIG and the uh, electrode for MIG. The electrode in TIG is obviously your tungsten electrode. To continue on, the next two numbers are 70, and that is times 1,000, and that is your tensile strength. So just like a 7018 for shielded metal arc welding, it's 70,000 pounds minimum tensile strength, which is the pulling forces. S is for solid. So it's actually the wire type. There are two main types. We have either solid or composite. Uh, when we talk about MIG, most of the time we're, we're probably referring to solid, although some companies may use a composite or what we call metal core welding. Okay, and that we'll cover here in a second. Uh, the last uh, number here could be a two, three, four, five, six, or seven, and that is the chemical composition of the actual wire. Uh, usually the higher the number, the more deoxidizing uh, properties it has, so it'll have higher amounts of silicon and or manganese. Uh, there are other ones uh, that do deoxidize, such as aluminum, titanium, zirconium, uh, but that number will help differentiate uh, the amount that's in there. So usually if we see a higher number, um, we would usually use that in MIG because uh, we're not using as clean a metal as we would in TIG. So like for TIG, we use ER70S2, and for MIG, we're going to do ER70S-6. So it's got higher cleaning properties, and that's, that's great because, again, when you're TIG welding, you're usually using cleaner metals, so we don't need as high a... Uh, uh, cleaning properties. That kind of covers the main steel wire that we use and teach in our classes. But to continue on, you might run into something that looks like this. Uh, e electrode rod 70C. Uh, that's where the, the difference comes in. That's your composite. And as I said before, it is a metal core. Uh, metal core is uh, a very fluid puddle. It's for being more efficient, so companies will use it to uh, save, basically. Um, it, it puts out some very smooth uh, beads, and it runs very hot. So sometimes you have a little limitations, maybe on thinner stuff with it. Uh, so we usually see it more on thicker plates. And then this, at the end, is just more information about that. I'm not going to go into that uh, for this class because we're not going to run that. Um, and then you might see something that looks kind of like this. Uh, this is not MIG. This is actually FCAW, flux cord arc welding. And there is a lot of differences. Uh, there is obviously E for electro, but there is no R for rod. It's not the same wire used for flux cores used in TIG. Um, the next one is that there's only a 7. So really it's 7 times 10,000. Okay, so that's a, that's a major difference than what we usually see. It's usually that uh, number 70 or 60 times 1,000. This is actually um, times 10,000. Uh, this number here, we usually use an E71T, and that is really for position. So we can use that one in all positions. Uh, T really means tubular, and that means that it is a tube with flux inside of it rather than something that is solid s 
which is totally a solid wire, usually just copper coated um, for different reasons, usually electrical conductivity um, also helps it uh, not oxidize when it's sitting out on a uh, wire feeder, you know, with the humidity in the air and whatnot. It also prolongs the, the life of the contact tips. Uh, that's why they copper coat these. Maybe I'll put a color around that. So copper coated, remember that that's for this here. Uh, these are not copper coated, okay? They are, they look like steel and then they have the flux on the inside. Not that this is important for your class, but I'll just do a quick run through. Uh, after the T, we have uh, a couple numbers. It could be 1 through 14. That's usability, polarity, gas, or self-shielded. Um, about half of these are for self-shielding, and the other half are for dual shield uh, flux core welding. Uh, you then have a M for mixed gas. A J is for improved toughness. And then you have your hydrogen limits, just like we see with like a 7018H4R. Um, you could have uh, 4, 8, 16 milliliters per 100 grams of deposited filler metal uh, with that number at the end. Okay. Another thing worth mentioning is rods that are used for um, other metals other than steel. So for aluminum, maybe we would run a ER4043 wire. That could be one example. Uh, pretty common. There's 56, 54, 55, 56, uh, ER1100. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Maybe we are going to run uh, ER308L wire, which is a type of stainless steel. So there are other ones out there, but really the most important is looking at our ER70S-X, likely going to use dash 6 um, in our shop. Uh, that should wrap up MIG electrode classification.